Hi Ishita, welcome to Web Engage. My name is Chirag. I lead the content marketing and special projects team here. And uh, for all the viewers who are viewing this for the first time, uh, if you could just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your background and what you do currently. That will set the tone for the rest of the conversation. Sure. Uh, it's great to meet you, Chirag. E meet you actually. Yeah. Um, okay, so a little bit about myself. I'll just go in chronological order. Born and brought up in uh, Gurgaon. Mm -hmm. uh, did my schooling from here. For my undergrad, I went to Delhi University, Hans Raj, where I studied economics. Mm -hmm. um, worked at EY for a while, post which I went for an MBA to ISP. I graduated in 2020. That's when I started working um, at NICA. Mm -hmm. Currently, I'm at Edel. I've been here for close to six, seven months. Mm -hmm. That's a quick summary of what I do. Nice. So you went to ISB, you worked at NICA from, and, and I'm pretty sure no B-School actually teaches retention, right? So how did you sort of land into this role? How did you paradrop into this role? Mm, uh, I don't quite agree that B-Schools don't teach retention. Retention standalone is, um, it, it's not a theory, right? It is just common sense and basic principles of marketing and good marketing at that. Uh, and we schools do teach you marketing. Um, so definitely I had a strong fundamental in, um, uh, you know, how to think from a consumer's perspective, um, how to devise strategies and principles that will make them stick to your platform. Mm -hmm. I could use all of this knowledge um, while I was appearing for my interviews. And that really helped. Interesting. So was retention marketing and customer engagement a conscious career choice for you? Or did it just happen? Marketing was a conscious career choice. But retention within marketing uh, just happened to be the case. Okay. Um, nonetheless, I always wanted to develop a career in marketing. I had this epiphany pretty early on in my EY days, actually. I wasn't doing marketing there, but I was associated with a client, um, Nokia mobile phones. They were my client. And I uh, one fine day, I saw them working towards their Diwali campaign. And, you know, they were doing ATL. They were doing BTL. All of this sounded really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. That's when I decided I want to do marketing. And when I finally landed at ISB, I chose marketing and strategy to be my um, major, my specialization. And that's where it took off from. Nice. Interesting. So you've had a lot of learnings along the way, right? Uh, you've picked up something from somewhere, used that in your next day and picked up something there and used that going forward. Uh, if you could go back in time and teach your younger self one thing that you learned very late in your career, what would that be? I will not answer this at a professional technical skill level because I think, you know, with age, with experience, I will always learn new things and that will always come handy. But like a soft learning that I've had is that um, I would tell myself to not be so worried about my career and my future. And, you know, eventually I should have confidence that I will make it work irrespective of what happens. So that's a learning that came a little late to me in life uh, because I was always enthusiastic to get things ahead of time. Um, I graduated from ISB when I was still 23 years old. Wow. So, and, and I was a YLP. I was a part of their Young Leaders Program. Mm -hmm. um, that means I got my admission while I was still in final year of undergraduation wow. and hence i would tell myself it's okay to chill a little to have fun a little yeah did you ever have to battle with imposter syndrome because most marketers do they they have this problem did you feel something like that uh imposter syndrome not really because um my journey has really taught me that wherever I have been wherever I have reached. I've done it on my own merit and my own um, because of sheer hard work and diligence, right? It wasn't easy, obviously. Um, even when I was at my B school and even when I'm, you know, at um, 
my job i'm often the youngest person in the room um even at i's be the average age in my cohort was 25 26 years old right and hence there was some insecurity that you know i lack the years but can i make up for it in um thinking in sharper thinking in um you know just sheer amount of hard work mm-hmm. so these are two pillars that helped me gain confidence and be assured of myself so i don't think i've uh, experienced imposter syndrome particularly interesting so jumping to the future right uh, i'm sure uh, you face a lot of challenges today as well if you could change one thing about your present that will solve the next 10 years of your career in terms of people processes or even something that's personal to you what is that one thing that you would change i think one thing that would help my career at the moment or you know whichever space i am in it will give me a lot of peace if um, uh customers can become tech savvy and um, be okay with moving um online with respect to products that are supposed to be offline first for example i sell dth and i sell dth online uh and you know if i ask you will you ever buy a dth online you will be baffled you will absolutely be baffled because which dabba am i supposed to buy how will the installation happen um you know how will the antenna be placed which pack am i supposed to buy a lot of questions and while the world has moved towards e-commerce for uh, discretionary items um it was very easy to sell things online at naika but with respect to products that are still a little complicated it mm-hmm. would be great if the customer can become a little more tech savvy and um be okay with online purchase journeys interesting so the way i would put it it's not a change it's a revolution because when you're doing it at such a scale uh bringing people online getting them acquainted and uh, build, building that credibility for the digital channel right uh, definitely i think that's trust a it yeah. is a rev- revolution you very rightly said that uh also because this industry primarily works on human interaction you would typically go typically go to a local retailer you would ask them acha kya acha chal raha hai abhi market mein mujhe batao main kya lu kaun sa pack lu mm-hmm. so that trust that happens with human interaction is what we are trying to bridge here via an online journey which is going to be tricky but if we're able to crack it then it's going to be revolutionary for sure i wish you the best of luck for that um, and with that said i come to the next segment of this conversation which is never have i ever i'll ask you a bunch of questions you can choose to answer them choose to not answer them and if you do do let me know uh, what happened why it happened and how it happened okay 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 so question number 1 never have i ever created a failed campaign and then blamed it on others <laughs> um yes that has happened um yeah uh, when you work in cross functional teams uh, it's easy to just pin the hat and you know just pass it on to whoever you think can be the scapegoat so yes that has happened and did it ever backfire uh i think i was able to manage you were able to save yourself yeah uh which brings me to the next one never have i ever sent a campaign with failed personalization tags <laughs> this uh happens this yes this has happened as well because um the thing with first name personalization is that you can have some it can go wrong um if there are names with characters that do not fit, fit the limit it can sound really funny at times true so did it ever make its way to social media uh no <laughs> lucky you covering our bases nice never have i ever tweaked my reports to save my ass uh no never fudged with numbers that's that's very risky it can get caught very easily i feel cool data never lies and sooner or later that data is going to get yeah. saved yeah uh never have i ever 
spread a campaign to achieve my month end numbers <laughs> uh i have done that yes nice. i would have judged you if you said no and being a brand like nike if you did not spray your campaigns then <laughs> that would be big time uh but did it never uh, you know sort of uh, come back to you from the management saying hey what are you doing why are you doing this and stuff like that mm, there has to be a logic behind everything and as long as you can back it it works got it uh which brings me to my last question never have i ever picked a bone with my manager because he asked me to run a stupid campaign or a campaign that did not make sense mm i think um, i have always been able to align my managers with my thought process so everything happens with mutual consent there is a, there isn't a situation where uh, i have done something that i didn't believe in or and even managers have been um, you know kind enough to understand my point of view so what has been the basis of this mutual consent is it data is it past experience is it hunch is it just hey you cannot do this it's outside our uh, you know rule book what is it um mostly it's heuristics with respect to how a consumer would typically behave and also data learnings from our previous campaigns nice nice so over that said ishita thank you so much for taking out your time and agreeing to do this um we usually do this in an offline setup where we pop a couple of beers and we ask a lot of candid questions i do have a lot of follow up questions for you will which i will ask you once we meet offline but until then uh, i wish you the best of luck uh, with your stint at airtel i look forward to seeing you soon and have a nice one thank you sure sure thank you